Hey everyone, Elijah here. In today's video, we're diving deep into my 70 day next extravaganza in old school RuneScape. I've got some stories, comparisons, and insights to share from my journey of accumulating a staggering 570 million GP, primarily in trios. So let's get right to it. Firstly, I just want to apologize for the delay in this video coming out. Over Christmas, my wife and I got a new puppy, and while she is adorable as hell, this has made finding time to edit more difficult. Let's start with Nex, the boss, and just go over a couple points about how it stands out compared to other bosses in RuneScape. Nex is unique. It's not your average solo boss like Muspa, Vorkath, and Zora, where you can just jump in and start grinding. Nex offers something more akin to raid level profits making it incredibly alluring for players like me who are always chasing that high reward. Now speaking of raids, Nex has some similarities to basically all three of the raids. I would say Tob especially when it comes to team dynamics. You need to find a team for Nex which can often be challenging in similar ways of forming a team of good players at Tob or COXCMs. It's not just about the skill, it's about coordination, being on the same page. Are we all doing the same strategy? Do we all believe the same kill priority? Especially for things like Bud Reavers. Are people gonna accidentally stack you out or lawn mower you during the shadow phase? And unfortunately, when you're an Australian server like me, that can often turn into a real patience test to try and find teammates that you can play with. During my next journey, I relied a lot on the next FFA clan chat. It's an interesting place where nobody splits any loots, so your gains entirely depend on how lucky you are and whether you get the drops in your name. It's a mix of folks, but predominantly Ironmen, chasing the dream drop. I did check out the Code ICC, which is known for loot splitting as being a priority, but I did notice this clan chat was a lot more quiet than the FFA chat, so I didn't really spend that much time there, because forming teams was a bit tricky. I did also do a handful of kills with people in my clan and split with them, however, this was a rarity and it seemed tricky to get people to come to Nex at all. Nex definitely has a bad rap for being a boring and annoying boss where you just click yellow, as people often say. Because of this, the overwhelming majority of my Nex kills were from the Nex FFA clan chat and were all free for all kills. Now before I dive into my experience, let's just talk about strategy. Nex can be tackled in a few different ways. Masses, which are marked in the world finder by the Nex worlds. These usually have 20 plus players and there's not really many mechanics that happen. You don't really take too much damage and they're quite easy. However, the likelihood that you're going to get a loot in your name is incredibly low. You have 10 player mini masses, which are still quite easy, however, a much higher chance of getting a loot in your name. You have five man teams, which are a bit more stringent on gear and stat requirement, and are a little bit harder still. And then you have trios and duos. Each method down the tier ups the challenge, but also increases your potential profit. It's a delicate balance of risk versus reward. So the smaller group you can get to, the more beneficial it will be for your bank. However, the steeper requirements on your mechanics, gear, and stat requirements in order to successfully pull off a kill. There are also a crazy few who have attempted next dolos, doing it on two accounts by yourself, which I did give some attempts, but uh, didn't go particularly well. Hopefully I can come back and get that one soon. You'd be looking at making an impressive 40 million GP profit per hour on average. So I'm going to take you on my journey of exactly what my next experience was like and hopefully that'll let you gain some insight and potentially decide whether you want to give Nex a go. I know from the outset Nex for me was quite an intimidating boss to step up towards. It requires group coordination and as a player who is predominantly a solo player, I mean you can see here I would rather go make seven other accounts instead of grouping up with players most of the time. Working into a boss where I had to work with others was going to be tricky. I watched a handful of videos, uh, especially this one from No Monkey, which has a lot of good advice but it is very information dense, it's a lot to wrap your head around. I plan on making a next guide of my own, which will hopefully be the video after this one, which will hopefully make a bit easier to bite off exactly how to handle the next encounter. So anyway, I start next, uh, I just jump straight into trios because I wanted to throw myself in the deep end a bit um, and just sort of learn before going any further. I tried the base mechanics of Nex in Mass Worlds before, but that really didn't give an experience of a boss. You pretty much just hit the boss once, hit a minion once, hit the boss once, and you're pretty much done with every phase because there's so much damage coming out that everything dies in seconds. Uh, so stepping into trios was definitely like learning an entirely new encounter. I was definitely very rusty at first, just doing very basic things, not doing step unders, struggling with switches. I would definitely recommend tucking in very few switches when you're very first learning. So I basically just started off with only a 4-way switch, learning trios, not doing MP2. 
MP2 by the way means melee phase 2, so meleeing during the shadow phase. So I gained about 70 to 80 KC just doing trios before I started moving up to MP2 and doing 8 way switches with Bandos. I did find it strange to switch to so many different pieces of gear, but increasing these switches is actually what made Nex more engaging for a longer period of time than I expected. Trying to add little extra switches or moving more efficiently and learning more about the boss actually made it more engaging as time went on. So in trios, your average chance of getting a drop is about a 1 in 130. So at this point I'm at 200 KC in trios with no drops. So starting to feel a little bit not great that I was still dry at nearly double the drop rate. Uh, I'd been doing a couple more trios where I'd been splitting with another person, me and someone in the FFA who wanted to split, or me and a clan mate. However, usually the third person would just be an iron who wasn't splitting. And finally on the 4th of November, I got my first split drop. So the drop was not in my name, but luckily the person I was splitting with got a 12 plate body. And we sold that for a 205 mil split, which is probably the biggest split I've ever had. Then I went back to being dragon. Again, I hadn't actually seen a drop in my name. And at this point, I built my way all the way up to 300 KC. And on my 300th KC, it finally happened. My patience finally paid off. Well, you're done now, right? You got your fat stacks, time to leave? Well, I've then gone on since then up to 343 KC, but I still haven't seen any more drops. On average in trios, especially once you have MP2 mastered and max combat stats, I was finding that once I had the team together, I was getting kills every six to seven-ish minutes. This would put my total next grind for my trio KC at about 37 to 40-ish hours total. This obviously doesn't count the time it took to create and put together all the teams. However, let's just use that as a breakpoint for now because it's going to be too difficult to try and estimate all the time putting all the teams together. And most of the time I was doing stuff on an alt account while the teams were forming, so it wasn't really downtime. So if we take our total amount of GP accumulated, 569,543,861, and then divide that by 40, we come out at a profit per hour of 14.2 million GP. So despite the fact that statistically I should have seen 2.6 items in my name at this point, just me, I've still managed to profit 14 plus million GP from this method, and it was pretty enjoyable as well. So real talk, Next isn't just about the fight, it's about the whole experience. Teaming up with players, especially someone who doesn't normally do that, was a big change of pace and actually very interesting. Being able to just chat between kills or during kills during bits of downtime was really fun, but I think that Next teaches you a lot about the game and teamwork and persistence because it can take a while to get a trial. Sure, it's got its downsides, like a long waits for teams, especially as an Oz player, sometimes that can be quite a long time, but overall I'd say the experience is incredibly fulfilling, so I definitely recommend giving Nex a go. If you're interested in Nex and interested in me creating a full detailed guide for it, I am hoping to create a similar guide to what I created for the Fight Caves, a last guide you'll ever need for Nex. If that's something that interests you, please leave a comment letting me know. And that's it for our deep dive today on Nex. I hope this gives you a better understanding and maybe even inspires you to take on the challenge for yourself. If you found something in this video interesting, consider leaving a like, comment, and subscribing. Another massive thank you to my supporters on Patreon who keep this channel alive and allow me to put maximum effort into each and every video. You can support from as little as 2 bucks a month. Thank you to my Lysian tier patrons, 22x7, Slow Civic, and thank you to the rest of my patrons of all tiers. I suggest checking out the Discord as I'll be doing future episodes of Setup Surgeon. If you want your setup analyzed, go check out the Discord channel, check out the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, and I hope something in this video helped you reach your next level.